Hello, I'm Ryan Carniato, Principal Engineer on Open Source and Netlify and creator of SolidJS. I created SolidJS because I believe reactivity to be a very powerful way to build user interfaces. In this course, you'll learn the fundamentals of fine-grained reactivity and rendering. You'll learn about routing, data fetching, mutation, and all you'll need to build real applications with SolidJS. I hope you enjoy this course on SolidJS. Writing all this code is a lot. So what we generally do is we go, wouldn't it be like a bit better if we could just like use a syntax word? And this, you start understanding why I really like JSX and not some of the other template DSLs. Because, actually, let's do this. Um, because JSX is great. It's like JavaScript. You can literally just be like, oh, um, click me. And maybe, uh, what else do we want to do? We want to add a click handler. And that click handler could look something like this. I'm just going to steal this. And if I kind of comment out all of this code we were doing before, maybe I'll delete it in a minute. If, our, if we had a compiler that could just turn this button into something that looks like this, I mean, we'd have something pretty powerful that can just literally um, you know, it's still a DOM element. And similarly, it'd be pretty great if we could just take this H1 and this effect and just kind of go, OK, well, I have an H1. And what is it? The count is count. And if the compiler could see that there was a function call, or property access, because it always has to be a function call or a property access, because we always need that. Then we know it's reactive. So it could just generate some DOM, and maybe whenever it sees that, throws its own effect in. If we could just do that, and it could compile to something like this, then that would be pretty powerful as well. And that's exactly what Solid does. We take simple vanilla JavaScript compiled from the JSX, and this one little text node here, the, the one count, that's the only thing that needs to update because we just wrap one effect around it, right? Um, it, it's, it's actually a very simple compilation. And of course, like no one writes code like this, right? So if I make a counter, you know, like let's, let, let's, let's encapsulate this, let's grab this and kind of put it in. Maybe we can make this kind of look like a, like put in a function. We can format it a bit. Um, and let's return an array maybe of our h1 and our button. And then we could just call our counter as a function. And yes, that's very nasty. We can spread it. So what we have is essentially a counter function. So you might think of this as a component. And that would be accurate. But it, we're just calling this function once and just returning these DOM elements and appending them to the DOM. Uh, of course, you probably still wouldn't really write your code like this. It's a little bit verbose. So let's take our h1 to kind of inline it. Maybe take our button here as, as also inline it. And kind of get rid of that. That cleans it up quite a bit. And um, actually. Instead of an array, we can return uh, a fragment. It's called in JSX, which is a collection of elements. And get rid of the comma. And if all goes well, we still have a working counter. And this is starting to look more familiar to some of you. Um, we're actually going to do one more thing. Is the way we're mounting is kind of a little bit onerous. So I'm going to import a render method from uh, solidjs-web. And instead of having this at the bottom, we can just go render counter um, to uh, document.body. Right. And this sort of completes that picture. Uh, Format it for style. And this looks very familiar to anyone who's used other JavaScript frameworks. But I really want to emphasize, and you might 
already see it if you've been following along. This counter is nothing special. It's just a function that got called once. So if I console log in here and say like counter, yeah, we're going to see our counter here. But no matter how many times I click this button, that counter um, wouldn't log in. Like, why would it? It's just a function. Um, and in fact, we can kind of do whatever we want in here, right? We can be like set it, set interval. Um, let's do something. Let's let's take the let's take the function from here uh, for the click function, and I'm not even worried about it, like at all. You know, even infinite loops or anything here, because this isn't going to run ever again. It's just updating on its own. And I can also click it and speed it up a little bit. But essentially, our component is just a function that runs once. And that's because our compiled JSX literally just created that one effect around that count. So when our count updates, the only thing that's happening is we're re running the code to replace the text content right here. That's that's all that's changing. We, there's no components that rerun. Um, there's no nothing. You can start seeing why something like this could be very optimal from a performance standpoint. We can kind of take this a bit further, right? Like, this isn't a real app. This is a counter. So let's, let's make an app component, let's say. And our app component is going to return a fragment again. And it's going to have some counters in it. And this, this is kind of an introduction to components here, because we're using a capital case syntax to run a component. So any, this is why we, we name them Pascal cased here, because anything in JSX that is Pascal cased as a tag will be a component rather than um, a native element. So you, for the lowercase ones, you can only use what's available in the environment, like um, button or h1. These are HTML elements. But by using a uh, Pascal case, you can run any arbitrary function and have it act as our component here. So um, what we're going to do is, instead of rendering counter, we are going to render app. And app has two counters that are counting up. But I'm going to get rid of this set interval because this is just noise. Um, and as you can see, we have counters, two console logs. And hopefully, if you're following me to this point, if you can click each one, they each have their own state that they manage. And when you update them, they are literally just changing these two effects. Nothing else reruns. There's only the original two counter console logs. And this is, this is pretty powerful, because it's very simple. You, you saw how we got here, because we literally just, without a component system, had our own update model. But it has a lot of implications, because if you think of this as just a function, um, nothing fancy, and this has nothing to do with that function, you can do stuff like this, like pull it out. And if you know JavaScript, well, if you have a variable that's referenced by a function, and you have multiple instances, they just share that state. So now we have global state management. It's, it's the same thing. All that happens is when we update the count, it updates these two text nodes, nothing else, no, no rerunning, nothing else. And well, global state management is, is pretty sweet. Um, we often actually have it kind of more um, scoped. So what we can do is we can bring our signal now. And let's put in an app. That's fine. The, the count is complaining that count is not defined. And that's because it's going to get something called props. And props is the object that um, gets passed in with all the properties that you pass in on your component. And for our sake, um, what are we going to do? We let's. You can pass props a few different ways, but I'm going to. I'm going to, sorry, counter. We're going to pass the count actually, as. What 
the children prop. But I'm going to go count like this, and we're going to pass it between like this. And if we do that, we also need a way to handle um, updating that count. So what I'm going to do here is uh, we can call this really whatever we want. Uh, our convention is generally to put an on in front of it to suggest like it's an event. But um, I mean, it can really be anything. Let's say um, yeah. I, I'm let's on. I'm just going to use on click because I'm I'm kind of being lazy about this, but. We can just do on click. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this set count that we have from above here, and I'm going to stick one in each. And to differentiate it a bit, I'm going to say the top counter increments by one, and the bottom counter increments by two. Um, and actually, to differentiate these, I'm going to make the second counter actually be two times the count as well. So one updates by two and two times the count. The other one's kind of like our original counter. And what we need to do here is now, because we don't have count anymore, we need to reference it. And the way we do that, we do props.children for ones that are passed in between. And then for named things, we can just reference them directly. So props on click. And for emphasis, underneath this count, I'm going to go console log app. But at this point, I'm thinking it might be unsurprising what happens here. So we have app, and we have our two counters. Let's try clicking the first button. Well, they're sharing state still, because this state is being passed in from the app component that's above. But what you notice is the first counter shows 1, and the second one shows 2, because it's two times the count like we set up here. Actually, let's format this so we can see it a bit better. Yeah, and but the, nothing console logs. App doesn't console log. Neither counter co console logs. In fact, when we click the second button and it adds by two, we, we see the same thing as well. Basically, nothing needs to rerun except for those same two effects in the same two text nodes that we've had right from the beginning. So uh, this, this is important to kind of show because it's important to understand that no matter how many components you have, the performance scales. It, it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't scale on code size or number of components. It scales on interactivity. Showing loading indicators are great. And especially using something suspense, we can kind of consolidate all those loading indicators. But there is one kind of gotcha with it, so to speak. It's that. Sometimes it's really jarring. I already talked about the experience when you change the tabs and you see the old data. But changing the tabs and always falling back to this kind of like loading thing is also very jarring. What we kind of ideally want is show the current state, show the current tabs, like you haven't changed the navigation, show everything the way it was, except maybe give some kind of indication that it's changed. And then when you complete loading the new page, then show it all finished, essentially. Of course, that's a little hard to do, because how do you have an interactive page being showed to the, to the user and at the same time be already rendering the next page that they're about to go to? And for that, um, we needed to do something called concurrent rendering. And to do concurrent rendering, you kind of We've already seen reactivity today, but we, we had to actually fork the, the reactive graph. That's the best way I can explain it. It's kind of like um, doing merges on GitHub, where we, we, we basically forked what we have as we, at any point where we recognize this, this is a change, this is a transition, this is something that we want to do kind of in the background. We just set that signal, and every downstream change that happens after that, we just do in a separate graph. The current UI stays interactive and updates. And then as those changes come in, we merge them at the end and give you the new state once everything async is finished. This is very technical. I'm not going to show you how that works, to be fair. But I want you to be aware of it, because it does have 
user interface uh, considerations. And I have one, one last tutorial example to, sh to show you. Um, uh, where is it? Before we move on to actually seeing this in a real life situation. And that, I, I want to show this because I want to emphasize the, 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 the difference here between the, the different user interface experiences. Okay, I have some tabs, all right? And when I click between those tabs, I see a loading state immediately. And this, is, this isn't bad, but I, I wanted to show this because this is what I'm talking about. This, I mean, this might be Twitter, essentially, um, but it doesn't feel app-like, and it's somewhat jarring to have this UI. If you like this UI, this is fine. You can do this. But what we can do, essentially, is we can use transitions as a mechanism to control this a little bit um, more granularly um, uh, and basically change it so that we don't do this. And I'm going to, again, jump a, a little bit ahead here. But by c c getting our use transition API here, we can now return something that indicates that the transition is running and, and a function to start our transition. And by wrapping our signal right in a transition, we're basically isolating that change from the rest of the system. And so for our UI, this simple change of just saying, hey, wrap this one setter with, a start with our start for our transition allows us to indicate to Solid that, hey, any existing suspense boundaries on the page, we want those to actually stay in the past rather than go to the fallback. And then we can use our class list here to just give some kind of pending indicator while it's working. And what this does is when we switch, notice that this won't change right away. Instead, it's slightly dimmed before we actually switched. And honestly, you can use different effects if you want. This might not be the most convincing version of this. But the idea is we're staying in the past until the data is loaded and then giving I used a CSS kind of transition for that like slow blur in, but it gives the end user an indicator that something has changed. And I'm actually, what I'm going to do here is inside our component, which has our data, we're just faking a delay with a resource, essentially. It, resources trigger this automatically. We can just make this delay a little bit more emphasized, so maybe 800 milliseconds in our random thing. And actually, maybe I should actually emphasize the uh, the fixed amount. You can still see that loading when we initially load the page. But now when we switch between the routes, we get this kind of smoother transition thing.